And it meets all those kind of, you know, the A's, the abjects, and the authoritarian bits at the end of your things, which are the rather more unsavory, to use the term which has come up already, unsavory side of kind of the way in which the social is organized, the way in which identities, citizenship, and governance can be kind of put together. But it seems to me there's, there's possible to have, to have a different conceptual apparatus around order and orders that yeah. does that business. Mm. Can I collect a few more? Yeah, do you absolutely. want to take that one first? Because it's obviously quite a big one. Um, just very quickly then, um, I think the moment you mentioned, okay, two ways of approaching the very question of order. Okay. <laughs> I was asked to get into frame. Um, the two ways of approaching order. If we understand that to be hierarchical, exclusive, and contiguous set of relationships, of course, that raises a lot of uh, issues. But if you understand order is a concept that's quite akin to Bourdieu's concept of field, that I'm also using domain, I think we would be on the same wavelength. Um, so I would see not only order, but orders of life, the social order, the political order, the ecological order, the um, cultural order, in which, in fact, these various rights can find expression. And without those orders and their ordering capacities, it is not possible to conceive to produce subjects as rights-bearing rights -bearing claimants. So I would agree absolutely with you on that. And I might use the language if I may borrow it. Okay, I'm going to collect a few now. So we've got Celia, we've got John... Who's already got the microphone, so you can see. <laughs> Any others that are? And so. John. Um, Engin, thank you very much. I wanted to reflect on uh, a missing bit of the faculty, which is the geographers who are not necessarily part of CSIC, uh, because I think your map of the field offered two different sorts of. Mm, implied spatial dimensions. One is the question about scale, because the scale might also be questions of space. I mean, about uh, levels being geographical levels as well. And the other was distance, because in your mapping of subjects, you drew the lines of further and further away. And I have no really wonderfully complicated question except to say, talk about that some more. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Very, a very enjoyable, enjoyable talk. And you held us all, um, had, had us all holding our breath, waiting for rights to come up. But I did notice that just before rights covered it up, there was responsibilities. Mm. And I'm, I'm trying to think about our Citizens' Council here. And I think I would want to say that in, in the context of very insecure identities, whoever are we, what is this for, and what are we going to do, people talked, first of all, of responsibilities. I ought to come forward and do this as a as a citizen, I should give something back. So a strong um, emphasis on responsibilities, but also another insecurity, if you like, a lot of consensus-making talk, not rights talk at all. What if we disagree? Can we very quickly get to a consensus? And then an abdication of responsibility for hard decisions. One of the things was one of the issues was should we be rationing care on age criteria and what I witnessed amongst that group of 30 people was a great delight in engaging with the the question listening to the different viewpoints but as one of one of the members said I don't think I could go home and tell my father what we have decided if we decided to ration so happy to take part of it. And just as a final point, I, 
Then, in the back of my mind, reading the deliberation theorists and linking this up, I've got a feeling that interests just is not where it's at. And interest, rights, claims, strategic action. Is, this, is there a gender dimension to this, perhaps? The people, the people in that forum wanted communication and coordination and quickly consensus. So right seems too much an in-your-face kind of word for what was going on in that forum. So, um, thank you. That was very engaging and very thought-provoking. Uh, and I have um, two questions, I guess. The first is sort of about responsibilities. And I'm just wondering if you could, I guess I wanted to push that a bit, because in some ways responsibilities also implies a certain um, aspect of electivity, like of people being opting in to being able to do that, as opposed to obligations or um, duty. Well, I guess it's very similar to duties, but I just wanted to know if that was something you intended or if there's something there beyond that. And quite similarly, I guess um, having rights and responsibilities as the new idiom, as the central framework, I'm wondering what that means um, in terms of the role of the social scientist, the researcher, in facilitating or bringing forth uh, new uh, subjects for making claims on on citizenship, um, because in some some of your examples, it's very clear that there seems to be many positive outcomes. But in other work, sometimes that may not be the case. So, mm. those are my questions. Should I respond to that? Uh, thanks very much. I have three questions: space, responsibility, and and. Um, analytics of social science. Uh, on the question of space, um, I absolutely agree with you, uh, John. I, I would have made, could have made, should have made a central stage in, in because I, in my writing I do uh, the question of space. Um, I just sort of buried it in sites and scales, but I didn't I didn't sort of uh, delineate. In fact, it's very interesting you asked that question. Just before we were breaking, I, I said, I'm going to enter space into my thing. And I said, should I attempt it? But technologically, then I was afraid I was going to wreck the whole thing up, and then that's going to be my space. Um, and where I was going to put it as uh, in the constituents, as a separate category, saying that sites and scales are even not reducible to something that we may want to call, in a complex way, space. And therefore, spaces of citizenship inherently involves scales, sites, and subjects of citizenship. And that, in fact, that's the lens through which to, to, to look at. But I admit also the question of space is really analytically difficult. Um, and I probably unconsciously avoided it, uh, to not complicate it that way. But I, I, I'm struggling it uh, myself uh, with that question, and um, it's worth thinking about. And I, I wish, is there any geographer here? Yeah, OK. <laughs> oh, Alan, I recognize. That's the only. And, Jenkin, you're a geographer. <laughs> yes, I am. As, <laughs> well, multiple identities. Yes, I am, but I am also other things, right? And I just negotiate my way through. Sometimes I am not a geographer. Uh, and I'd like to sort of express that for a variety of reasons, as many uh, tactically do, you know, the subjects in their everyday lives. Moving on to the issue of responsibilities. I did flash it for a very... Uh, brief moment of time, responsibilities, but maybe I did it too fast. And I said that I see it as a couplet, rights and responsibilities. A as a couplet, but I I'm also sensitive about this because there is, you know, a neoliberal, neoconservative notion that there are no rights without responsibilities. And then, then uh, the uh, balance has gone too far into the rights, and we have all these rights talk, but not enough responsibilities. I'm a little worried about that. As much as I do want to talk about responsibilities, I don't want to decouple it without rights. At the